So, w welcome. We believe in uh, starting on time. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so welcome to Standing Tall in the Room. This is um, a sponsored by the Women of OpenStack, which is a growing and vibrant uh, organization within the OpenStack community. Um, and we have a number of events over this <coughs> um, session. And uh, this one is our sponsored um, discussion. And uh, we're going to talk about um, how to um, be, uh, you know, how to have your voice heard in, in uh, where you're the minority. So I'm going to start with um, introductions. Um, so I'll start with myself since I'm the moderator. Uh, so my name is Beth Cohen, and I, am, I work for Verizon as a product uh, manager. I'm actually not working on OpenStack these days, uh, although I was one of the authors of the um, OpenStack architecture and design book uh, that was written last year. Yay, read it. <laughs> uh, and um, I've been involved in OpenStack since the Boston uh, Cactus Summit. Uh, I think that's three years ago now. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Nali. Hello, nice to meet you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My name is uh, Nali Zhang. Yeah. I'm uh, now, now is the OpenStack Korea user group leader. Yeah. I worked at CloudDyke. Uh, I'm in charge of installing OpenStack and uh, cloud storage solutions. Yeah. My name is Sheila Sabi, and I work at Comcast as an OpenStack operations engineer. And I started contributing to OpenStack docs after the um, summit in Hong Kong. Hi, my name is Elizabeth K. Joseph. Uh, I work over at HP, and in my role there, I work on the uh, OpenStack project directly in the infrastructure. So Garrett and Jenkins and all that stuff you interact with when you're contributing to OpenStack, um, it's the team I'm on that runs all of that stuff. Um, I started working on OpenStack uh, about two and a half years ago um, when I started HP. Hi, my name is Radha Ratnapati and I have to do something. No, you don't. OK. <laughs> So if you didn't hear it, my name is Radha Ratnapaki, and I'm from IBM Research, and I'm the person with the loudspeaker at Research for everything related to OpenStack. And we're a vibrant community in research, but being researchers, we tend to go in different directions, and it's my job to make sure that we go in the right direction. I'm Rainy. I'm Rainy. <laughs> I'm Rainy Mosier. Um, I am a Recently, a software development manager at Rackspace, um, working on the build, release, and deploy systems for going from upstream OpenStack all the way to the Rackspace public cloud. And I'm currently transitioning into a product management role there in the digital practice area, working with applications for web content management and e-commerce on top of infrastructure, cloud infrastructure. So that's me. So, thank you. Um, so this is our agenda. And um, so, uh, one of the things is that as as women, uh, we often face, um, I think I'll put it politely, diversity in, in our job. Um, and so I'm going to turn it over to Nolly, who's going to tell us about what empowers Nolly <laughs> every day. Yeah. I prepared my introduce uh, report <laughs> yeah um uh i uh, pass <laughs> mm. uh, i am in openstack korea user group leader yeah so um, our community uh year of create yeah 2011 uh 2011 by yeah uh, now uh, second leader uh, it's me um, vice uh, president, yeah, staff, uh, and and uh, we have uh, six uh, part and uh, operator. Uh, our ha we have a homepage and uh, Facebook group, and now is a member count, yeah, maybe four thousand over, yeah. Yeah, 
our community major group. Yeah. Uh, actually, I talk about how to be competent and what makes self-confidence. Passion, effort, sharing makes you to be confident. First, have a passion for work. Passion could be explained by strong feeling about something. The way to have a passion is to love what you do. When you do have and work passionately, you can get more energy and confidence. Being passionate is not enough. Act upon your goal. Take action with passion. When I when I heard the first OpenStack Day in Korea, I didn't have enough time uh, to focus the event during time, and I didn't know how to prepare the event. But I tried to do my best and didn't give up. So the event was quite successful. The experience is an opportunity is to learn and grow for me. Second, yeah, if hurt is, is worth it. Four years ago, OpenStack is not well known in Korea. Yeah, I couldn't find a user guide, experienced engineers, and ex instructions. I should do by myself all, but I would not give up learning. I worked hard to learn. So, ah, uh, so the effort, uh, I become expert and leader of OpenStack Korea user group. User group. Yeah, I could find a job that right for me. Yeah, and I have worked at Cloudike from a few months ago. Yeah, I'm charge of installing OpenStack and cloud storage solutions. Yeah, ah, our CEO supports the expense to come here for me. Actually, I dreamed to attend in OpenStack Summit. Yeah, finally, <laughs> my dreams come true. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> now I'm so happy. Anyway, make effort is definitely worth it. Last, working together and share ideas. Yeah. I had too difficult to installing OpenStack. I asked to community members, and I could uh, I, I could run faster and find the solutions more easily. Yeah. Don't try to do it all on your own. Working together allows for varied view, insights, and knowledge sharing. Working together is better than working alone. When you have passion, don't give up and work together, you can stand tall in the room with others. Thank you. turn it over to Sheila who's going to talk about um, how women you know what are some of the things that uh, women face when they join the OpenStack community <laughs> uh, I think as a woman it can be intimidating getting involved with the OpenStack community given the ratio of males to females I think we can all see that there's definitely a gap there um, although I did find out that today there are 9% of women at the conference and the last one was 5%, so there has been some growth, which is great. Um, stereotyping, sexism, those are all issues that we still face. 
But um, I find that if you speak out and join the Women of OpenStack group and join the mailing list, ask questions, and get involved, there are many supporters that will help you out and cheer on for you. Uh, we should mention uh, yesterday there was a half-day session of um, the alley session uh, that was designed for, it was actually designed specifically for men or the majority um, uh, to, uh, to learn how to integrate uh, people, people with, you know, minorities into the organization and into the, into the community. Because um, there's, there's a lot of hidden bias, um, which, um, you know, it's our responsibility from our side, and it's also the responsibility of the community to be inclusive. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Liz, who is going to give us some tips on overcoming shyness. Great. Thank you. Um, so I'm very shy. So I can't actually give you tips about going to cocktail parties where you don't know anyone, because like, I, I would just go home. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is, I, I'd like to speak more into the context um, of a developer um, standpoint from contributing to the OpenStack community. Um, so every day in my work, I'm on IRC, I'm in chat channels. Um, I'm participating on mailing lists. Um, and I was recently working with a mentee, and I realized in the course of, of working with her that each one of these things was a major challenge for her. Posting to the mailing list, it's really scary the first time. The OpenStack dev mailing list, there's thousands of people on that. So she didn't want to get her grammar wrong, she wanted to make sure her points were clear, so I reviewed her email before sending it, and it was, it was all good. I mean, she's brilliant, right? <laughs> it was fine. Um, and so I realized that there are a lot of these steps in our community that a lot of the developers take for granted that are actually really hard for new contributors. So going even on IRC. It's a text-based wall of, you know, it's a wall of text and you don't know what's going on and there's joins and parts and these things that are not people talking and it's confusing and can be fast moving at times. Um, so in working with her, I realized one of the things that helped, because um, I don't remember from when I got involved. I mean, it just feels like I've always been doing open source. <laughs> um, but when working with her, I realized it was really a matter of just going out and doing it. So I had her join meetings. Um, and then we went into you know, mailing list threads and getting her to reply and respond and get engaged. Um, and then talking about code review itself, that's also a scary thing. I mean, you're, you may be used to doing code inside of a company, but now you're putting it out there on the internet. Anyone on the internet can do code review on OpenStack projects. Um, so a lot of people end up being really apprehensive or shy about putting their code up there and having it out there in the community for review by anyone. Um, and really, that's, that's another one. If you just put yourself out there, I mean, like you said, the community is actually quite friendly. Um, in the context of code review, I also recommend reviewing other people's code, because if people see you commenting on their code and giving responses, that when your reviews come up, they're more likely to look at it and more likely to treat you like a human, <laughs> because you, know, you were nice on their code reviews. Um, they're probably going to be nice on yours. And even if it takes a few tries, I mean, we've all been there where I, I think one of my patches early on in OpenStack had like 28 patch sets. <laughs> it, was, it was really awful. <laughs> but I got there, and it was OK. Like, no one, no one said I was a worse person for it. You know, I was still accepted into the community. Um, and I'm a core member of the infrastructure team now. So it didn't really hold me back. Um, I mean, you, can, you just go out there and start doing it. Um, another place that I think shyness in our community um, comes up is, is giving talks and being in panels and things at places like the OpenStack Summit. Um, and one of the really good things that the Women of OpenStack panel did this cycle was they hosted uh, one webinar, was it, I think? Yes. Yeah, they did yes, a yes. webinar specifically designed towards telling people, explaining to people how to submit a talk for Summit and how to get it accepted. So it went through the process of writing a talk in a way that had topics that were interesting um, and things that were appropriate for the Summit, um, and then how to go about you know, getting support for that, because there's a voting system and then there's track leads who make decisions on, partially based on votes um, and are also on content. Um, so they had this really great webinar um, that was supportive of um, people trying to submit talks. Um, so I highly recommend looking up those resources for that. Um, and in general, for public speaking and being on panels, um, it takes practice, but there's only one way to get practice. So <laughs> I encourage you to put up forth talks. Um, if you're really too scared about it, um, join up with a colleague and do a talk together. Then you're both scared on the stage. <laughs> but it actually is really helpful, especially collaborating on something and having ideas, like bouncing your ideas off someone in the process of creating your talk. 
Um, so, yeah, that's what I've got. If anyone else has comments about shyness. Well, we split it among six, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, I should give a little history of how this panel came together. So I was at the Paris Summit, and um, w you know, during the, the working session, um, um, I suggested that we, we do some more um, uh, workshops around empowerment, because I think, as you said, a lot of it is just gaining confidence in your, in your ability to get up and, and, and talk. And um, so I went on the Women of OpenStack mailing list and LinkedIn and said, uh, I'm going to be submitting a talk. Who wants to, who wants to join? And um, these lovely ladies all <laughs> <laughs> volunteered. <laughs> and then Nolly, um, you had submitted um, a talk separately. And then the, the uh, track chairs suggested that, that we merge the two talks together. So I thought that was really excellent. So. Anyway, anything, anyone else? Just adding on the shyness, um, even though we are talking about women, men are shy too. <laughs> and um, engineers in particular, it, it may actually be more of our, of our personality type than actually much to do with our gender. So do, do know that it, as, you're, as you're working with other people, look for, look for those shy people that have the brilliant ideas that will get up there and be scared with you. Um, it helps them grow, it helps you grow, and um, it is a great experience. I encouraged, strongly encouraged, two extremely introverted people on my team to give a talk last year in Paris and they hated me for it but once it was over <laughs> they felt great because they're like people are listening we have opinions we can we can be the thought leaders and, and continue to grow their career so um, some, I think it has more it may have a lot to do with our personalities I'm not shy <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah another tip for the men is to attend the women's workshops because some of these things are t um, kind of addressed and highlighted more in the women's workshops. And we welcome everyone, so. Yes, we are gender neutral. Uh, so with that, I'd like to turn it over to Radha um, to talk about some of your most empowering moments. And I know others will probably want to share as well. So. Yeah, well, I'm going to be a representative sample of IBM and our empowering moments within the organization. Um, but before I get there, I mean, to feel empowered is really to feel as if, you know, you have a sense of authority to go and do something. So in uh, my world, I look on it as a time to take some action. So whenever I feel I need to take action, I, c I empower myself on my own and I go do it. And, you know, 90% of the time it works well. I mean, there are a few occasions when I shouldn't have taken action, but you know, that's okay. I mean, 90% is good enough as a metric. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, I, I do want to reflect a little bit back on the uh, one of the observations in the Women of OpenStack breakfast, which uh, happened earlier today. And for those of you who are not there, uh, one of my colleagues who's in the audience, Nina, um, actually made a very good point, and that was in the open uh, development environment, there is a technical meritocracy. So it doesn't really matter what you've done in the past or, you know, what your titles are or what your degrees are and, you know, whether you have a PhD or don't have a PhD. It's really what you bring to the table and what you give back to the community. And that in it by itself, I think, is a very empowering kind of attribute. So feel empowered to contribute and success follows, you know, once you start contributing. So um, I, I think that is a very um, empowering moment. Uh, there's another um, uh, sort of aspect which I think works very well for women. So I know we'll open the mic up for questions later, but I have a question to the audience. What is the one thing that you feel women do a lot better than the men? There's one unique thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. But there is one where we're way ahead, you know. <laughs> Perception is kind of getting there. It, it helps. Listen helps. But there's a bigger word which includes all those things. Communication. Empathy, communication. We're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> Collaboration. Who said it? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that is the one quality that uh, women really are very good at. And some of the examples I've seen when you have um, uh, women leaders in the open community in the various projects is when there's a diverse set of opinions, um, the women leader is often able to bring them all together and go ahead 
uh, in a very collaborative manner, uh, sort of driving towards consensus um, by including everybody. So that is, I think, actually a great strength, and I would like to encourage all women to build on that strength. Um, uh, personally, for me, um, you know, just raising my hand to be on the panel was an empowering moment. Um, at the Atlanta summit, I raised my hand to be a track chair for uh, one of the topics. It was a topic which was very dear to us from an uh, IBM uh, cloud strategy point of view, and so I felt I, you know, it, it, it was great. It was like bringing in what we wanted to do at work as well as in the open community. It had to do around hybrid clouds. So, um, so those were my personal empowering moments, but I'm sure there are many others out there, and. Um, my advice is just seize it, look for the opportunity, and just go for it. So I'd like to open up to other panelists to offer their most empowering moments as well. Don't be shy. <laughs> I can go first if you want me to. Sure. <laughs> yeah, we have time, you know. Okay. I, I'm watching. Oh, no, she's watching the time. I'm just kidding. So <laughs> I, I've, I've, had, I've been blessed, honestly blessed, to be part of the OpenStack community now for over three years. And um, by moving out of engineering, I, I find myself with a little more free time because um, I'm not on call 24 <laughs> 7 when things go wrong. Um, and I made the comment to my daughter, who is Marin. Shout out to Marin when she watches the video. She's 10, she's in fourth grade, almost fifth grade. This is when their, um, their gender awareness starts to set in, their insecurities, um, getting picked on for being good at math, which she is, because she's got her daddy's engineer brain. Um, and I made the comment to her that I was looking forward this summer to getting to pick up a new language, because I haven't gotten the chance to really learn anything new from a programming point of view. And she said, can I help? Can I learn as well? And that was just a great moment so that all my talking, all my, all my traveling, the time away, the hours up, the cranky mommy that comes, um, it, it turned to that moment of can I help, can I learn too? And that was a really great kind of culmination of, of my career and keeps me, helps keep me going and, and building this better inclusive world for her. So, that, that's, that's fantastic because I've been a complete disaster on that front. <laughs> so my daughter just refuses to look at computer science and for some reason she's gone into the electrical aspect of engineering which I shunned. So <laughs> <laughs> my daughter's a statistician. So. <laughs> oh, she's either going to be a mathematician, a computer scientist or an actor. Those are her, those are her, lead, her top three choices right now. So uh, one thing uh, I'd like to bring up uh, before we open up to, um, to the audience questions is uh, yesterday on uh, Twitter feed, there was, a, there was a pointer to an article in, uh, that ran in Fortune magazine that said um, that uh, women who were raised by working women earn on average 23% more than women who were raised by non women who stayed at home. So um, I'd like some comments about that. Yeah. I hope she gets to make more than me when she gets into the workforce yeah, she then. Has to. She has to. Like yeah. statistically, she will. Great. Yeah. That's good for her. <laughs> so, any other comments? <laughs> I can I can actually comment cuz I was I had a mixed world for actually being raised. My mother um, worked from home for for quite a bit of time and then she also worked out of the home. And so it was a mix and I got to have the best of both worlds. Um and I personally struggled when, when she was born. Do I, do I take a step back? I already slowed down. You, know, you, you slow down a little bit when, you're, when a child is born, as, a, as any parent really does. Um, and I feel like I did take a little bit of a, a, a speed bump. But I chose to go back to work, and, um, and it was hard. It was really hard. But for me, personally, that was a great and rewarding experience. Um, at the same time, I'm very cautious not to judge those those women that, or those fathers actually, that choose to stay home and work full time because that is a different kind of gift that you're able to give to your children. Um, I'm blessed with an extremely extroverted, well-adjusted child who hates the idea of homeschool and all of that. She's like, I want to go to, I want to go to school. Um, but it is a, it is a different kind of gift than economic gain. So just that would be my addition to the commentary. So thank you. 
Um, I'll just add one thing and then I'm going to open it up. Uh, my grandmother w worked full time for her entire life, but my mother actually chose to stay home. And I think I felt a role. My grandmother was more of a role model for me than my than my mother. Although I actually realized years later, I always wondered what my mother was doing when I was in school, and I realized she had four children in seven years. So I know exactly what she was doing. <laughs> she was working really hard. <laughs> uh, so with that, I'd like to open it up to the audience. Um, for questions and comments. So, and the, there's a. Hello, I'll go first. I'm not shy either. <laughs> so, uh, you guys let off the panel discussion talking about, uh, in general terms, about biases and discriminations and whatnot. Could you give more specific, um, like, anecdotes about something that you faced and how you were able to overcome it and maybe what you learned from that? Um. So uh, one of the earliest one was um, very early in my career was when you're in a team meeting and you want to offer an opinion and you start talking about something, um, there's, there was always another engineer, um, generally male, because uh, when I started in the industry, there weren't that many women at that time either. Um, and it would always be then a point, counterpoint, and then another guy would tag on and um, even though they didn't completely agree with each other, they felt they had to stand against me. Um, so, you know, and outside they were kind of good guys. I mean, there was nothing really wrong with them. So I think it just came out of the whole culture. I, I started my uh, work um, back in India. I worked at Tata Consultancy Services. So I think it was a bit of that to the point where I was a systems uh, engineer for Tandem Computers. And uh, there was one day there was um, uh, um, um, the, the reports were printing out very wrongly. And so there was a bug, obviously, somewhere in the spooler. And I was told to debug it. And I'm sitting in the debugger, and I, I'm going nowhere. And like everybody, oh, she doesn't know anything. And then uh, my manager came and said, oh, um, you know, it's, it's taking a long time. I said, I really need help. Could you help me? So I think that might have been now, in hindsight, the most empowering moment ever. <laughs> so, uh, so when he sat next to me, he couldn't find the problem either. So uh, then it was uh, sent to you know Tandem US, and then some you know there was some cryptic command you had to run, and then it was solved and it was taken care of. But those are kind of the biases where you know it's kind of assumed that um, the woman engineer is good but not as good as everybody else. So we kind of feel we have to go the extra mile. Now, of course, over all these years, things have improved and things have changed. I no longer feel that. But that could just be because you know I'm, I'm at a different level and I'm doing something different. Um, but people who start off uh, early in their careers, it, that's the kind of bias. That's one obvious one I could think of. You can take turns. <laughs> okay. Start, then okay, so I was in a similar situation where I was working on a maintenance with one of my colleagues, or actually a group of them. Um, and uh, final part of the maintenance was to reboot the server. Once the server was rebooted, uh, it just didn't come back up at all. And we had no idea what was going on, but I started troubleshooting it for about 20 minutes. And then um, I. I uh, passed it over to the person who uh, was in charge of that server, and he asked me what I did, and I told him everything, and he proceeded to do the exact same thing because he didn't believe that I did it properly, and he accidentally didn't uh, mute the conference bridge that we were on, and I was called all kinds of names from, you know, this, blah, 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 to, you know, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Anyway, so at the end, um, he ended up being on the bridge for another five hours, you know, while they got the vendor involved. Um, but I think that that is common where, you know, to your point, um, we're just not doing the right thing or we're not as smart as the males um, in, in the industry. Or that's the perception. Not, it's not reality. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I, I mean, I've been very, very lucky to have teams that I've worked on throughout my career have been really supportive and very amazing to work with. They've always given me chances. They've never really, I've never had a, I don't have a story like that. So, yay. Yay. <laughs> um, Thanks for like the <laughs> That's good. But uh, I, I will say that once I step outside of my team, 
all the gloves are off. I mean, the world of the internet is really harsh. Um, I, people assume that I have certain roles. Uh, they assume, you know, if I'm if I'm at a booth, because we, we put engineers at our HP booth all the time, but they assume I'm with HR or that I'm with sales. And so they won't ask me technical questions. And then when they ask me HRE questions, and I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> I work on open source. I don't even know about HP. <laughs> so uh, I mean, there's a lot of assumptions out there, and it's, it can be really exhausting because you think you know, you're, you're there and you're an so engineer. But I wanna My only addition there is on communication style. There's a lot of bias in women and how we communicate and balancing our assertive and our responsive styles so that we don't get labeled with the B word, but that we're not pushovers either. Yeah, I agree. So I'd like to take another question. Hey, and actually, it's a little bit related. It's kind of a comment and a question. So um, I struggle a bit with this whole topic because I've actually worked with great people, men and women included, and I've, I've always kind of felt included. Yesterday I was in um, a customer meeting and it was just kind of funny that um, I was the only one who people didn't introduce themselves to. And so mm -hmm. I kind of sat back and looked and said, okay, is it because I have jeans on? Nope. Um, is it, you know, I was trying to figure out why and the only thing I could think of it's just because I'm Because you're female. a woman. So that was kind of <laughs> tough, but you know what, and sorry, I'm standing on my tiptoes. Um, <laughs> Can I do it? Don't be yeah. sorry. You can yeah, just adjust the mic down. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, the other thing is I, I also struggle with this because I, I do work with a bunch of great men and women. And so how can we um, foster the men maybe in the room who are um, looking to have a diverse team and are supporting the women? Like, how can we help, you know, proliferate or kind of how can we spread out those good behaviors and encourage more of that? You know, because... I don't want to just talk about some of the bad things, but how can we do some of the more good things? But, and I, yeah. and I gotta add, you know. That, the owl, owl yeah. skills workshop, allies, ally skills, ally. ally. But I have to add even, and I'm not trying to bash anybody who's involved in it, you know, I, I read the description and it just said to teach men. And I, I you know, that crushed me a little bit because I was like, you know, there are guys that do a lot of this stuff and who know a lot of this stuff. Like, y you know, I, I guess I'm trying to figure out how we um, focus on positive and a bit more. And we sometimes do it to each other. Right. Yes, yes. I, I think it's also to teach women. Some women yeah. mm -hmm. also suffer from that behavior. And, and I can say, as some, I have to admit, there's ageism too, and I'm older. Um, and it's definitely gotten better. I don't know if anybody saw the Mad Men f finale yesterday, yay. Um, but uh, you know that show really highlighted the absolute blatant sexism of that period. And I actually grew up during that period. And, and that was absolutely spot on true. Just total cra stuff that is completely unacceptable today. So we have come a long way. <laughs> And so to summarize that one, it was every time you see a positive behavior or that good, that good cultural vibe, highlight it, call it out, make it public, reward people um, for it. And I'd also say look at encouraging it from a diversity of thought point of view. Um, gender makes everyone scared. It, ethnicity makes people scared. Age makes people scared. If you look at it from a diversity of thought point of view, it's a little more accessible, a little less intimidating, and a little less risk that you're going to offend somebody. So we have one more question. And I'm going to actually still continue to harp on his question, um, actually uh, anecdotally um, addressing that. Um, uh, I also work on an amazing team. Um, I have a manager who has an amazing amount of confidence in me. Um, and it's interesting to see when 
this happens, and it's completely unintentional. Um, with I'm the only I'm the only woman on my team, and and the and the guys will make mistakes or they will do things that are typically you know sexist, and it's unintentional and they don't mean it and it just happens. And the two stories I'm gonna I keep turning around because you asked the question, but the mic's here. Um, two examples. Uh, I had uh, my annual review last year, and my manager had one ding for me. I interrupt people in conversations and in meetings. Right, because, yes, a man who interrupts, a man who is forward is bold and assertive, and a woman who interrupts is disrespectful, and this is a societal belief. Um, Two days after I got dinged for that in my uh, review, I was in a meeting with my boss and I was talking and my boss cut me off. Let me tell you, he and I had a little conversation after that. <laughs> he about crawled underneath his desk. Um, so uh, he hasn't called me out on interrupting people since then. So um, my, my, yeah. Uh, um, my, uh, so my takeaway from that particular thing is to gently pointed out because it was not something that they had that he noticed before. I mean, this is a guy who took a chance on me. He gave me my first engineering position. Um, I moved into engineering from product um, from project management. I mean, this is what's completely unintentional. Um, another thing I've had is I've been in meetings and I've asked an intelligent question in the meeting, had it be fully answered. Five minutes later, had the person sitting next to me ask the exact same question, had somebody else start to answer it. The other one woman in the room, happened to be in sales operations, said, hang on, hang on. Courtney already ans asked that question, and we already answered it. And again, it was pointing out that this had happened. Um, so you know, I think we're close to so yeah. time. So that's to give you the examples of what happened, what? and it's and it was and it's completely unintentional. I, I somebody, it's the way somebody we're is standing. Actually, I want to do an announcement. What? Uh, let me check how much time we have. Uh, we have four oh, we have four minutes. Ask, okay. We so, can repeat the question. Right. So we have one more question, and then I know Sheila wants to has an announcement to make. Okay. Two I've, more questions. Okay. Sorry, I just wanted to start out with a, a bit of a story and then have a question. Um, so the first time I ever experienced any kind of gender bias was in high school. I was awarded a college scholarship, and there was a big ceremony, and I was going up to collect it, really proud of myself, and I heard a man sitting next to me say, oh, what a shame, they're wasting a scholarship on a girl. And uh, I, was, I was shocked because it had never occurred to me that I was any different than anybody else in that room. And I'm, so my question... When a woman, go, when any of the women in this room go into a meeting where there's men and women, or maybe a majority of men, do you go in thinking of yourself first as a woman, and then as an equal, or then as a worker or engineer or whatever else, or do you go in feeling like an equal as an engineer, as I happen to be, and who happens to be a woman? And I guess my concern is that sometimes we separate ourselves, and we kind of limit ourselves by thinking by starting off thinking we're different and we have a little less to contribute. Uh, I mean, we should not separate ourselves. We have to go in as an equal. You always have to believe you're an equal, I mean. Um, and if you run into the bias, then you've got to address it, you know, one-on-one -on -one with the person. That would be my suggestion. But it's always, as uh, Rainier said, you know, diversity of thought. I mean, you might think differently, and there might be another man who thinks differently as well. And you want to be inclusive of that thought as well. And you have to resist as much as you can letting that bias be a reflection of your self-worth. It, it is very, very difficult. I'm not going to lie. I, I do take it, take it personally. And, and there have been periods in my life where I have thought less of myself because of comments or, or that bias. And, and, it, and hopefully you have network, you have a board of directors, a circle of friends that you can talk it through and, and, and pick yourself back up when that does happen, because it, it can be very devastating. Okay, thank you. I think we have one last. 
Yeah, we have one last, one last question. Okay, just a shout out to all the men in this room. I think this um, was yes. targeted to, uh, you know, this session was meant for men, right? Yes. How do they work <laughs> well with women? How do they make the most out of the diverse workforce? So thank you for all of you. I think we've got about 40% men, which is great. Treat, treat us as equals. You know, yeah. that's, what, that's all we're asking. And feel free to disagree as well, even yeah. though we're right. But we, <laughs> we value right. your support, okay? I look on them as supporters. So. And so, Sheila? So to finish up, oh. yeah, she, Sheila has a, an announcement to make. Yes. Um, so I'm also very, very lucky to be on a team. Um, our management team, our team, all the teams I work with are very supportive of women. We have a number of females working on OpenStack uh, as of today. Uh, I think we're at five, four or five women across. And um, this just in from our VP, um, we are giving away the two uh, Tokyo Summit OpenStack tickets to the women of OpenStack, to women who cannot make it. Because we won Wonderful. the Super User Awards today. Wonderful. Oh, yay. yay. So, excellent. So I think with that, um, we're, we are done, and we delivered on time. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>